that I've applied masking tape around the bow area. The edge of the tape denotes the separation line between the missile deck and the hull proper. This photograph uh, from the uh, Silent Chase book uh, illustrates, though it's not clear, I'm sure, here. Uh, you can just see it, this off-color edge here. That denotes the break on the real submarine. Again, the missile deck or superstructure and its demarcation line continues up and around the bow. So you see that I've recreated that demarcation line in tape and we will apply putty here and then sand the putty down with the tape still in place which will assure that the putty stands proud of the hull by the thickness of the tape. A couple of human hair uh, widths and it'll be enough to show just enough shadow to uh, define the demarcation line. There's also a contour problem here which I've identified the pencil that'll receive some extra putty and will be worked down. Working quickly here I'm mixing up some uh, Bondo and uh, troll it right up against the edge of the tape This is about as much work as I can do at a time because it's got to be very, very liquidy. When it starts to set up, it starts to drag. We don't want that. There. Now, the seam has to be preserved, so you notice I'm running an X-Acto blade right down the seam so it won't give me a separation problem later. Now, if there was any scribed uh, items that were covered with the uh, uh, Bondo, I would have uh, <clears throat> clear those out with a scratch hole, just chasing the uh, <clears throat> putty out before it had a chance to cure. Now I'm going to clean up the scribing over here simply by running the stylus over there. There we go. There. A few more passes uh, with putty and I think I'll have enough material where after I sand it down there won't be any holidays and I'll have a nice smooth fairing in that raised edge which denotes the demarcation line between the uh, missile deck and the uh, pressure hull. I've already started sanding on this and the object here is to sand to the height of the tape and no more. At the same time fairing to the surface of the primer up here. So I'm trying to get to the edge of the tape and not eat into the primer here. So what we're doing is we're making a flat, a transitional flat from this compound curved bow section. Now I was careful to put on plenty of Bondo so I wouldn't have any holidays so I wouldn't have to come back and do this again. I'm just starting to cut through here, so I'll take off this bondo here. Now this, this is a rigid piece of sandpaper made from 100 grit. I always start my rough cutting with 100, then I descend to 240 or 360, and then from there 400, and then I'm ready for a primer. Primers are uh, sanded with a 400 going down to 600 then I'm ready for clear coats, or rather color coats. Okay. I'll take this point uh, nearly to completion. I've gone down down to 240 grit. And we're revealing the tape here. Now, what I'm going to do is lift the tape so you can see this edge. Let's rotate the work a little bit. Okay, the model's upside down. We're looking at the starboard side. I'm going to take off the gross pieces of tape first. And when you peel tape, you don't want to peel this way. You want to peel away from the work. So 
that's what I'm doing. I'm peeling away from the work. All right. Now, this piece of tape is right now underneath. That is this small, thin piece, which was used to negotiate the radius. If I were to yank it up now, I would be splitting uh, and making a ragged edge here. So I'm going to come back with the 100 and get it down so that, that uh, uh, I start seeing the tape through what remains of the uh, putty. And pulling down and away from the work, I pull up the tape, leaving a very, very sharp demarcation line. I'm not going to go any farther there because I haven't uh, sanded down the rest of the uh, demarcation line. But there you have it. Now I got some area here to clean up with a knife, and that's okay. Well, time has come to lay down some primer. Now the primer, its principal job is to give us a neutral gray, which makes observation of errors, such as tool marks or holidays in our putty work, evident. It also, as you can see, is now permitting the shadows to be thrown from the high relief area we just filled up from Bondo. I'm putting it on pretty thick over, over the bondo. There we are. Let's rotate this thing so you can see it. The only area I see that needs work is in here. There's some scratches from where I was digging in there, but other than that, I've achieved the uh, goal of filling in that gaff over here on both sides and producing this high relief demarcation line. both sides. I see some tool marks also here. So I'll put a lot of fill. Like I mentioned earlier, this type of primer can really be gopped on to actually fill. So I'll come back and I'll counter mask the edge here to retain it and then I'll do some uh, light sanding with uh, 240 fill that tool mark. Now on a warm day I can actually come back and start wet sanding in 15 minutes. Do that with your hobby primers.